heard the terms what is the meaning of houdini magician yes correct that's correct so a magician uh, who has a art to escape so escaping means not to run away just to break the loop and come out so houdini uh, the with the css houdini we we would try to do the same things we will break the chain process and we'll come out and we'll apply some magic so moving to the next so what is css houdini so css houdini uh, is a set of apis using which we can hook the browser css engine and we can register our own property uh, with it so isn't it cool thing that uh, the property which we would register that has some meaning and using uh, we can use that property as our own property in the, in, in the css so so uh, which are those apis uh, which are available uh, with the css houdini and can be targeted uh, type dom api properties and values api paint api layout api animation api parser api and front font matrix api so these are the seven core uh, core apis which are available and which can be uh, accessible uh, with the javascript so before jumping uh, all together to the css houdini before we should under, uh, before that we should understand that how the css and css works how the rendering pipeline works so i think saket uh, saket will explain you that how that css css works and rendering pipeline works over to you saket thank you vedat hello there so yeah uh, we'll be talking about how uh, basically when we load our page how css applies to uh, node and how we see like what we see on the screen how it is being processed and made by the browsers so basically when a link is um, accessed uh, browser goes and uh, like loads the html through internet and it parses it creates a dom tree and uh, then it parses the css uh, with it and creates a css dom tree now css dom uh, it it holds all the uh styling of those uh, dom nodes which is there in the dom and now we have a uh, few phases few steps uh, basically uh, layering compositing and painting so that uh, after that everything is visible on on the screen now here uh, we can uh, we can see how houdini helps us in this uh, layout engine css layout engine what it does it it gives us apis to hook into uh, css engine to create these properties so that uh, we can like add more functionalities at uh, using those apis uh, and hook into this uh, css engine itself right so and now uh, you might be thinking like why why css would you because uh, now it is like uh, everyone of us know that uh, there are js polyfills uh, which would allow us to uh, just go and create the, that functionality for example um, i8 doesn't have uh, that rounded uh, rounded borders now if we want that functionality we can just create a polyfill out of it and then apply that on our browser if our client demands it but why not to use uh, polyfills and use CSS Houdini is what I'm like. So uh, to to address that, I'll go back to uh, our uh, rendering pipeline, where it uh, with where uh, once the parser is done and DOM DOM trees are made, we have uh, this uh, layout, paint, and composite composite phases. Uh, these steps happen and then things uh, appear on screen. Now this is the time when our uh, JS polyfills will be called and uh, it will again uh, run the js and then create that functionality and then uh, we'll have to rerun uh, rego these steps to basically um, see the, that changes in our browser which we want through js polyfills and uh, so you see the loop happens twice to just bring in that one functionality that's what we don't want because it is definitely looks like a hack and uh, definitely it's not very performant now if we when we use css 
Houdini APIs, it will allow us to hook it, hook at the same uh, CSS ARM and uh, basically CSS engine place, and uh, it will allow us um, to create that property, and it will just l let us to uh, run this uh, step only once, not twice, as in case of. So this this is one uh, this is one use case uh, like this is one advantage of CSS Houdini's Houdini APIs. Now, uh, so Vilit will talk more about the other challenges as a front-end developer which we face. So, yeah. So, thanks, Akit. So, uh, nothing uh, is impossible with uh, with JS. So, as Akit said that we can write JS polyfills and we can uh, achieve whatever we want. But uh, there are, uh, being a front-end developer, how many of you are front-end developer? I would like to know first of all that. Oh, that's great. So, uh, being a front-end developer, uh, there are certain challenges which I see uh, to apply. So there are one one of the challenges is conic gradient. So there is a CSS property to apply the conic gradient, but uh, it is not very well uh, supported by the browsers, um, much other browsers. Like uh, I don't think so that it has been supported by Mo uh, Mozilla and all. And uh, apart from that, uh, uh, checkbox and radio button. So to override the traditional checkbox and radio buttons, it is really challenging part. Moreover, border shapes. So, uh, traditionally, we can apply the border radius to the uh, container, but what if we want to apply an inward, bo inward border radius, or let's say a scoop of scoop border radius, or we want to cut the edge edge from that uh, container. So, such kind of border uh, border uh, properties and border shapes are not available, and. Uh, uh, this one of the useful thing is tooltip. That tooltip functionality traditionally what we do, uh, usually what we do, we create, uh, we use that uh, pseudo elements uh, before and after, and using a border shape we create a tooltip. But uh, using this, uh, using CSS Houdini, the solution of these four challenges is a Paint API. So using a Paint API we can uh, overcome this, and in our demo I'll show you some of the thing. Uh, apart from that, uh, if we talk about in terms of layout, then uh, one of the challenge is uh, mosaic layout. So, so that challenge also can be overcome using a layout API. So, what is mosaic layout? So, mosaic layout is dividing the your container in a column, and based on the height of the elements, it will adjust in a each column. So, so using the layout API, we can easily create a mosaic layout. And uh, animated gradient. How many of you have tried to animate the gradient uh, on over? Was it working smoothly? No. So I'll just quickly show you that uh, how can we do that. And uh, uh, with the CSS Houdini, uh, that is actually achievable. So I will give you, uh, I will uh, show the two traditional way. And uh, so first, uh, what I did, I just applied the linear gradient with yellow and dark blue color. And on hover, I'm trying to override it with. Uh, uh, is code is visible? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's great. So, and uh, on hover, I'm trying to change the color uh, linear gradient of uh, that uh, yellow to orange. And when I'm trying to explain it, uh, and even I have mentioned the transition property as well, though the color is not getting uh, changed with the transition effect. Okay, now. Uh, someone would might think that uh, if you think in uh, terms of uh, JS, uh, JS like thing uh, or jQuery, then we can define our variable. So, but we have uh, defined our CSS variables here and try to override that uh, with the uh, secondary variable. And if we try to do that as well, it won't work. So, because browser is not, browser understands the property, not the value. So, <coughs> what we uh, what we can do to achieve this. Uh, so we can uh, register the property. So the now color primary would become a property uh, with the syntax of color, and uh, where we can define uh, the syntax of the color. So currently, I have defined the uh, color syntax. There are other multiple syntaxes available, like uh, image uh, percentage uh, and a number. So. There are more available with uh, the uh, properties and values API. Uh, right now, I'm not uh, mentioning any color over here. I'll just keep it transparent. 
and I'll try to override it from the CS, uh, CSS. So I've written so if I'll try to override this so here you can see the animation so the animation gradient can be possible with this so this is the beauty of CSS ODD guys isn't it cool thing and uh, so now the property which I have registered it has some meaning so it has a meaning that this is the primal color, uh, color and this is going to be changed but uh, before jumping to the next uh, API that is type of API I would explain that what would be the dif what is the difference between properties and values API and a type of API so properties and values API are not st strong type so let's say what is strong type so if I uh, define the initial value over here and uh, I'm I'm just making any mistake over here. I'm not mentioning any color. Though the CSS won't stop working, it will work. So this is not strongly type checked. But what happened with the type DOM API? So uh, I personally call this type DOM API as a typed awesome API. So what happened when we write uh, uh, CSS code? What happened at that uh, at the time of passing? It have, uh, the string based uh, regex happen. It will pass your code and check that whether it is a class then it should be a dot and the string name and the open curly braces property name with colon and values. So it looks little bit weird and awkward to us. So when we use the type DOM API and when we, ta when we try to fetch the value of that particular element using the type DOM API we'll get the structured data output and a computed values. So, uh, not just because we are getting the structured data and computed values uh, when we target a particular element, that's because the type DOM API is good. But the real use is it's a strongly typed. And second, uh, I, I, have a I have a screenshot of a demo. So, so this is the demo. Uh, so, what I've done here, so initially I've kept a all the box uh, box opacity 2.2 and uh, at the bottom I have provided two buttons so without type DOM and with type DOM on clicking on the uh, clicking on a, on the each button it will increase the opacity by 0 0.2 sorry so uh, so here you can see that when I am execute uh, when I am trying to increase the opacity uh, so you can cons uh, you can see the console message is sh showing me the performance time. So that is 0 0.8 to 99 milliseconds. And when we try to execute the same thing with the type on, the performance time is 0 0.51. And believe me, uh, uh, right now it's very uh, difference is very less, but it's almost half. But uh, it really gives you the very good results when we use with the type on API. So this is the major uh, major advantage of using the type DOM API. And uh, so there are other APIs like Paint API, Layout API, and Animation API. But uh, custom properties and uh, type DOM APIs are, are based on the strong type and uh, loosely type. But uh, uh, the Paint, Paint API, Layout API, and uh, animation API are the worklets. So before jumping to those APIs, we should understand that what is the difference between web workers, service workers and the worklets. And uh, Saket would explain you uh, this, uh, dif uh, this difference. Over to you, Saket. Thank you, Vedat. Uh, yeah, so uh, till now we talked about uh, the two concepts of type DOM and uh, custom creating custom properties. Now we are getting into uh, more advanced and more basically API uh, which would talk uh, about the browser concepts and where we hook into uh, CSS engine. Now, so uh, before going there, I'll uh, talk about uh, these web workers and uh, worklets. So to understand that uh, we we all are uh, like uh, web developers and we know that our browsers are single threaded main uh, main application with a single threaded uh, uh, single thread which carries on all, all main activities right and uh, and then workers are something which will have uh, which will allow uh, to run more uh, 
heavy performance heavy tasks on a separate thread that are rather than on a main thread and then workloads are more specialized uh, workers so to visualize the scenario i'll uh, go and uh, take an example of uh, immigration uh, which we go through when when we are traveling abroad so 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 imagine uh, that you have a counter with um, you have a uh, immigration area only one counter is there so what will happen that a huge line on uh, at a time only one person would be processed so everyone else has to wait till that uh, background verification of that person happens and then he moves then the second person comes so at a time only one uh, person uh, one person is entertained but in second scenario uh, where you have multiple counters for um, these uh, immigration and uh, so at a time as many <coughs> counters are there those many number of people can be handled right uh, basically they they can be processed and uh, your uh, processing uh, like it becomes more faster right and now uh, take an example of uh, a counter which uh, like in european countries you have european passports uh, taken uh, care separately and then you have non european counters uh, which where we have specialized person for handling european passports and non european passports so uh, having these specialized persons uh, you have uh, this process to be more faster right so uh, so taking um, like coming back to our here uh, the workers and workloads workers are like the like the separate threads uh, which will carry out more uh, like calculation or more uh, heavy tasks on a separate thread and once it they are done it will pass on the message to main thread which is generally main thread is generally uh, we want to keep it non blocking because user activities has not like it should not stop and uh, it should carry on and workloads are again they are similar to workers but with a more specialized functionality uh, in css houdini we have workloads for animation api uh, animations for layouts for paint so these workloads are specified uh, like they have specific role of doing these functionalities and we use this apis to hook into these processes and uh, create our functionality like uh, so I'll, i'll go to layout api first right um here uh, layout api is uh, it helps us to define our own uh, custom display properties like currently we have only a uh, few defined uh, display properties like block and line flex grid so now we have uh, with houdini's layout api we'll have the power to define our own custom properties custom layouts uh, which with it was talking about like having a, a masonry grid as a layout so we can instead of going to js and defining that uh, in a non performant way it's very slow and it's it is not uh, very performant and that's why we uh, like have a lot of jittery uh, in current scenario but if we use uh, if we define that through uh, this uh, layout api that would be more performant and more uh, easier uh, like even uh, easier to define as well so and uh, you can uh, create your own uh, spec like uh, flex and grid or you can define your own spec uh. so uh, i'll talk more about uh, what layout api has like layout api uh, when we define our own custom layout api uh, layout custom layout it is applied to a particular element uh, say like display custom uh, display uh, this layout and then custom name so when we do it uh, to a particular element it becomes a parent element and then that parent uh, element is responsible to uh, to hold that uh, all children in, uh, inside it uh, you can imagine flex like flex is applied display flex is applied on a parent and then you have ch- child elements as well and we have some uh child properties as well which goes on child so uh, similarly so parent layout uh, holds um, algorithm for complete uh, parent and then 
it it has information like layout constraints and layout edges layout edges is collective information of the parent for scroll borders and padding basically outer region of that parent and then uh, after layout edges we are left with the layout constraint which is basically holding mm -hmm. the is the remaining space which holds child elements right and each child is again uh, it contains two information uh, about the child layout uh, layout child and the layout fragment so if we um, so this layout child holds a all css properties and style map format and the second information is a uh, layout fragment which holds your information about the intrinsic size of that element child and uh, it has again two information um, max content size and min content size basically giving the complete information about the size of the child right so uh, when we uh, like when we define uh, we have uh, we have an uh, we define uh, register it with the name of sample layout and then uh, there is a class which holds all functions uh, like all information about uh, input uh, child properties intrinsic size layout and constraint we'll we'll talk about it later uh, in more detail uh, and so once we uh, define it, we registered it in our uh, main uh, main thread, and in CSS we call it like this: uh, display layout and then sample layout. So it will apply that this sample layout onto our element which we are calling. Right. So this is how layout API works. Now, uh, sorry, uh, going to animation API. Uh, if I'm making you sleepy, bear with me for some time. Uh, because, so this is all theory part, and when we go to demo, it will be more interesting. You will see everything in action. Right? So, I'll, uh, with uh, Animation API, uh, <coughs> there are currently, uh, there are few options, only few options, which, uh, uh, through which we can do animations uh, in web. For example, uh, we have CSS transition, we have CSS animations, we have uh, web animation API, right? And uh, so these are the current solutions available for animation stores. And the problem with uh, this, these solutions is that they are stateless and time-based. Basically, you, um, if you want to have any user interactivity and then, so basically all user interactivity will be just a trigger point. You can't define your animation based on the user activity, right? Um, uh, for example, like if if you've seen your mobile browsers, um, they have address bar. When you scroll down, it dis disappears. And when you, in between, when you try to scroll up, as soon as you try to scroll up, it will, it will reappear, right? This is, this is an example of user um, like user interaction based animation, right? Uh, it it not only uh, looks at the user interaction like user activity of scroll it also maintains which direction user is scrolling like up or down based on if it is up it will show up uh, show show up the address bar if it is down it will because um, it understands that user user needs to see more more part of the page so it will it will remove that part so basically this is something uh, a user like not time based it's user activity based animation right uh, for example if you if you see this animation like uh, see this video you see this pink block is being controlled by the scroll in that block happening in the block right now if we um, if you want to create this uh, this kind of animation um, currently we don't have a solution through existing animation in a, uh, like whatever animation options we, we have. Now, Houdini gives us uh, this uh, like power to create these kind of animation. Right, uh, and I'll, we'll see how it does it. So it, uh, here we are uh, like for the same scroll, uh, we are using creating this um, animator, sync scroller, and uh, registering a class uh, for that, sync scroller animator. It takes, 
it basically looks at two properties um, two things uh, input properties and in output pro properties input properties are something uh, you uh, it will watch if there is any change in there and if it not, notes uh, if <coughs> if it gets this information that it uh, there is some change in input properties it will trigger this class the functionality written in this class uh, so don't go on the, this complex nothing like don't uh, worry about this code i'm just talking about so only two things we need to care about is input properties and output pro properties input we watch the change and based on the change we uh, process something and uh, make changes in output properties which is applied in our uh, css so um, so here we have main scroller and uh, all scroll uh, all scroller basically uh, the video which we saw which we saw the pink block was uh, all scroller and the uh, main scroller was the block where we had the scroll so when user was scrolling it took as input the place the placement of the scroll bar and it it so this scroll type is watched uh, main scroller is watched and then it is being applied the output is being applied on all scroller so uh, in in our code we were just uh, matching the position of the uh, scroller and then we are, we were applying the the same thing on the mm, pink <coughs> line yeah so this is how animation api works uh i'll let with it talk about paint api thanks akhil are you guys with us seriously <laughs> okay so as saket explained that uh, uh how the element uh, layout and uh, animation api works uh i would like to explain about the paint api so this is the this way just uh, we can uh, create uh, paint api uh, each code means uh, the each part of code means what should be written in the html js and css but before jumping into that uh, uh anyone can tell me that uh, any element do you know which allows us to draw whatever we want on the html yeah. correct so paint api is as similar as a canvas so what we need to do uh, we register our uh, we can uh, register our paint worklet with uh, we can invoke the name so th this would be the name and this would be the class name which has some of the functionality written with the paint, uh, that class we uh, include that uh, uh, register paint uh, and the class with the paint worklet add module uh, add module thing with the html so what it will do it will it will link with the uh, main browser thread that uh, register paint has been written and it will link to the main browser thread and whatever the name we have uh, mentioned uh, to that whatever the name we have registered so that that will go with the css part uh, with the background properties so i'll show you the quick demo about this so there is a one uh, so css houdini rocks uh, anyone uh, heard about css css houdini rocks website anyone is aware of okay so css houdini rocks has created this toolkit uh, using the css houdini api paint api and uh, i have just taken that code and uh, i have tried to provide some of the support and i have extended it a uh, little bit so currently uh, the tooltip is in the uh, right side direction so and uh, when we change in the position of that uh, uh, tooltip position variable it's you can see that it's working uh, it's moving on a vertical side so now let's see uh, what i have done so i have i have provided one of the variable that is uh, tooltip placement so if i change it to top if i i just need to change the border uh, image slice property to 100% to top and you can see that it is uh, it's automatically placed on the top and here i don't have to worry about the tooltip position because if i now if i change the tooltip position property then it will automatically move on the horizontal direction so what i have done so from the code uh, we can see that 
similar uh, similar uh, i have just taken the tooltip placement based on that i have taken the uh, place a uh, value of that placement in the variable stored in the variable and based on that uh, placement value i have created the switch case which is drawing just a tiny triangle so this is the triangle which will be drawn on each of the side and uh, based on the position it will uh, take care it will take care of the scrolling part so it if it is on the left or right side it will work it will move vertically if it is on top or bottom it will work uh, it will move horizontally so this is the one example of paint api uh, the second example i would like to share is the checkbox thing so so here is the traditional checkbox so when we so this is the by default checkbox provided by any browsers but uh, let's see instead of uh, there's a tick marks we would like to use any cross mark then what we can do so what i have done uh, so i have registered a paint worklet uh, uh, register paint worklet with the name of checkbox i have used that uh, here with the checkbox so i'll show you uh, each uh, each and everything uh, with the use of uh, checkbox so right now we are not worrying about the edges and all so this is just the color so if we take care of uh, of cross but before just we uh, we will initially we will create only cross in the checkbox we we'll just increase the size of it so i have in, i have just create i have just create that cross marks uh, so it's starting from top left to top right and top uh, right to top left so i have created it so now i will apply uh, some transparent color so here now if we try to over it so it's applying so it's working and when i check the checkbox it's it's working fine okay now what if we want to provide some edges so uh, what if we some if we want to add padding from all the side of this uh, of this cross mark so what we can do uh, we can include the edge or variable okay and uh, we can call this uh, variable inside our js using the input properties so here i have already done that uh, so here i'll just get that edge properties and using that edge properties uh, the little bit logic would be, uh, will be changed so now if i try to refresh this if i hover it you would be able to see the padding from all the sides so this is the beauty of paint api and uh, as i said said as, uh, as i said that this is very much similar to the canvas uh, canvas related js code so it's very easy to understand as well um, so moving to the uh, moving back to our slides so uh, while working on the css udini there are certain things uh, regarding which you need to be very much cautious that uh, this is very much experimental right now and uh, to use uh, css houdini apis and you want uh, to make it work you need to enable this chrome flex uh, moreover your website should be accessed with the local host or https and uh, if we check the current houdini state uh, uh, <laughs> yeah so this is the current state of odini uh, so here you can see parser api and font matrix api are not well supported and these are the browsers which are which has agreed that they will provide the support to css odini and uh, right now it is very much under development it's very much experimental and uh, to Uh, i i personally believe that to for any community if anyone any community needs to grow then active participation is really required so we should contribute this community uh, how many of you know or believe that this is the cool thing and we should we should definitely try please try it once you will definitely so there are uh, references as well and uh, qd42 has started the initiative of supporting the css houdini and uh, if you have guys have any questions now you can ask
If you don't have any questions, then I'll ask. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about support okay. to the CSS preprocessor and the Rootix compilers as well? Because uh, in, um, is it possible that the compiler or the CSS compiler uh, doesn't compile our code because of custom property? So, uh, the code which has been written inside the JS is like a part of function. Okay, so uh, while writing the code inside the function uh, with, with the pre CSS preprocess like size and list, we can call, we can use the functions, we can define the functions there as well. So it would not be an issue uh, with the CSS preprocess. Yeah. So even so, basically, uh, the purpose of CSS preprocesses pre uh, is uh, uh, giving like compiling everything into CSS and uh, browser reads CSS and these APIs uh, will directly talk to browser itself, browser engine itself, so uh, they doesn't have to do anything with the CSS preprocessors, like yeah. everything would be compiled and it will be used. So if you can, uh, like um, uh, CSS uh, preprocessors definitely support root elements uh, mm -hmm. property, root element property, so it's exactly like that. Thanks very much. Anything, anything else? Yes. Uh, can you go back to the slide? Is is Which slide? The, the grid where we had the browsers. This one. Uh, so one thing about this, uh, do we know if, if uh, when, if, as we can see, the Microsoft Ed Edge call is yes. right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think uh, about the spec and uh, browsers supporting these specs. So still the specs are in process of development. Uh, so basically for uh, layout, uh, API version 1 has been already specced out and uh, Chrome has already started implementing it. So, uh, so once that all specs are uh, defined and so the major thing to note here is that all browsers have agreed agreed to like support this uh, initiative and uh, there is specific like uh, uh, Houdini task force uh, people from all these browsers basically they have a team and uh, they are constantly working on this yeah uh, my, my question was actually uh, to when it says that something is shipped um, are we do we think that uh, this will be standard between browsers because one of the uh, main purposes of Houdini is to have standardization. So mm -hmm. if we would have one row of green and ship, does that mean that it actually works the same in all browsers? All the browsers. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, you answering the mic maybe? The recording. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, once like uh, this. Uh, this is basically is Houdini ready it. Uh, there is a site which manages uh, agreement from all the browsers, and once it supports, then only it comes here. So basically, uh, yeah. Um, so spec will. It has been agreed that spec will be followed by all browsers, uh, like to the point. So I think yeah. If once uh, they say that uh, it is supported in here, so it will be supported. Uh, like nicely and yeah mm, so still we have time for C time like I think it would require like uh, down the line one year to like two years that time would be there until we see everything green because this is definitely a huge shift in the way we do CSS and the way we currently style our mm -hmm. websites and yeah so but this is definitely a uh, future to how we write CSS. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Can you explain the name Houdini where it comes from? Uh, yeah so, so Houdini means uh, so Houdini is also the name of the magician you uh, might be knowing uh, and Houdini means to escape out of some chain some loop so currently uh, and to do that uh, so in like from coming out of the common chain you need to do some magic and like 
So this uh, basically these all APIs enables us to create magic. So what we see in like currently uh, the CSS is like we we have some predefined properties and then we use it and then see the changes on the browser. So that's basically the magic. Now it is enabling us to create that magic, create the, those properties and see people like do wow about that. So, so basically that's CSS. <coughs> Yeah. Do you think this is uh, likely to raise any like more kind of security concerns? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so that's why uh, like currently uh, uh, these APIs only uh, work on HTTPS and uh, localhost only. Like the similar, the same security concerns which we have with the serv service workers. Uh, so that the same applies here as well. Yeah. Aren't you worried that this will actually make the whole front end bit a lot more complex and muddy? <laughs> because people will try to make their custom stuff to make something that sh should be really simple. Because what I'm seeing in my company, for example, if you have junior developers, they try a lot of different stuff that they've heard about to do something really simple like I don't know, something mm -hmm. with a background image or a great user or an SVG. And this, to me, seems like you're opening doors for like... <laughs> yeah. Really yeah, so uh, I'd like, I like to answer this uh, by Spider-Man's statement, like with <laughs> power, you have responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... <laughs> so, so, yeah. Will be this like... Uh, because I, I really like the idea and I see like there might be a big use case to use this kind of approach to to fix maybe compatibility issues between browsers. Like with this kind of things you can get somehow with Microsoft Edge to do things that yeah. it's not doing by default if they really <laughs> enable this feature. But uh, so, uh, now we don't need to like worry about Microsoft Edge because now they are coming to WebKit. They are, uh, but anyways, like uh, we we are, uh, we know that they'll also support these APIs and yeah, yeah. this uh, and this enables us uh, to a state where there is no like browser monopoly, sort of, and it, we can do anything um, to support our customers. Yeah. Question. Do you have any idea how mobile browsers will support the APIs? So for example, on, on desktop you have your normal checkbox, you can style it, but then what, ha what happens on an Apple iPhone, what would be the plan there to recreate that styling? So eventually, uh, like now, mobile browsers are not that separate from uh, desktop browsers, they almost support everything and now, so eventually it would be like all platform, all browsers would be supporting this. And, uh, yeah, and uh, that's why because this is uh, this is something which will always have performance benefit uh, on that, and mobile browsers will definitely want it because uh, it makes the site more performant on mobile. Yeah. Where can we see the updates on the progress on this slide? Uh, so this is basically an iframe loading uh, from. This CSS is Houdini ready yet? Is a site. Oh, he's he's like this. So this is the site. <laughs> Actually, we would have some. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the place where you can see the status of which API is being supported by which browsers. And yeah. Could you give me a reason why you would use Houdini to style the checkboxes instead of uh, pseudo elements? Uh, so again, um, so styling checkboxes. Um, now we know that our designers create weird, uh, weird stuff, and, and that is nothing. It is nowhere near to what we get from browsers, right? And uh, 
So what we do is we uh, hide the main input element and then use uh, before and after to bring in the image and then uh, see with the property checked or unchecked uh, like checked properties there then we apply a different image and then uh, when it is not checked we mm -hmm. apply a different image so this is and i think uh, you would agree with this that this is bit hackish mm -hmm. yeah uh, and uh, also like uh, when you it fails when there is a validation uh, and yeah we can't do it like if we use directly display none to this input element it will break when there is validation going on front end validation happening so that's why we use visually hidden uh, or clip it from being visible there and that's why like that's how we bypass this uh, and we uh, use this validation validation but using houdini it will will not have to do all these of uh, workarounds we can directly uh, hook into css engine and then we can just uh, instead of that box we can have our own image and uh, with the change of the property it will have the, the other image which we want there so that's why like um, it it enables us to directly uh, use paint API in for painting that box so that's why it is more a uh, cleaner way and more uh, performance when it is there. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking, so am I right in thinking that you have to define JavaScript to add these rules into the CSS? Yeah. So doing the JavaScript file. Yeah. So, so does, does this force you to add like render blocking JavaScript and does that have much of No. Uh, so basically, yeah. Uh, on the main thread, we attach this uh, these worklets and these worklets uh, only uh, like these worklets only uh, they do the processing and then pass in uh, information to the main thread so we just have to register these uh, worklets uh, so these worklets again handle uh, they have a separate class to handle these uh, like if we are doing animation if we are doing layouting if we are doing paint so whatever Worklet we are using, we just need to uh, register those those class through uh, to the main thread, and then rest of the thing is taken care in the background, and nothing is render blocking. Okay. The whole purpose of having worklets is to not render block. <coughs> That's it, I think. So, guys, we are running out of time a little bit. So, uh, you can contact us on the boot number sixteen as well. Uh, we are here and. Uh, on the, our Twitter handles are Saket underscore KMR and Vidit underscore 27. And uh, please do provide your feedback regarding the session. How means how much did you like, not like? So it will really help us. Uh, thank you so much.